So thank you so much for joining us. My name is Jane Hamilton. Um, it's lovely to welcome quite a few of you back again uh, to our fourth webinar this session. This afternoon, we're going to be looking at National Progression Awards and Foundation Apprenticeships. Now, we've already been working our way through some of the different qualifications that are on offer. We've looked at lab skills and skills for work. And this evening, we're going to continue looking at how we can continue to develop the curriculum offer within the senior phase through the delivery of National Progression Awards and the Scientific Technologies Foundation Apprenticeship. So I'll be giving a quick overview of the qualifications before handing over to the colleagues listed. So there's also going to be an opportunity to ask questions at the end of the session too. Once again, I've been very fortunate that I can welcome back Angela Barkley. Um, we've also got David Dixon joining us from Dunbar Grammar and not one but two fantastic lecturers from Dundee and Angus College. So a warm welcome to Julia and to Pamela as well. Thank you so much for joining us. The point, the idea behind um, our webinar series is, of course, to support and inform our colleagues. And this, like I said, this afternoon, we're going to be focusing on the delivery of MPAs and scientific technologies. Once again, I've shown this slide before as well um, out of some of our previous sessions, because at the moment um, there we're thinking about our timetables. We're thinking about what our curriculum offer is going to be for the learners that we work with. And whenever this particular report, the OECD report into the senior phase was released, there were basically three big major themes emerging from this review. One focused on how the external assessments could be more innovative in order to capture a wider range of student capabilities. A second was to potentially rethink the role of teacher assessment with more emphasis placed on continuous school-based assessment. And the third is the one that really, really resonated with me. And the third is to better integrate the academic and vocational strands with the assessment system, which would offer a broader range of curriculum options. So that is once again why we're here this evening, to have a look at how we can better integrate the academic and vocational strands of the assessment system. So what else is out there that we can offer our learners to provide them with an experience um, that where they can succeed and provide them with an experience where they're going to be developing the skills necessary for learning life and work. So just to give us a quick overview um, in and around the National Progression Awards. Now, the, the idea behind National Progression Awards is that these are aimed at assessing a defined set of skills. OK, so these are very much skills based and um, also that can also provide some additional knowledge in specialist vocational areas. They are linked to the national occupational standards. OK, so I've realised there's there's quite a few um, acronyms going to be floating about this evening as well. So between our MPAs and our yeah. FAs and our NOS and SVQs and all of this type of thing. Uh, so there's quite a lot out there. It's not until you start kind of digging down that you realise just how many acronyms there are. So the National Occupational Standards are used um, by industries um, to identify the skills that essentially that they are looking for and the standards expected from their employees. Now, these National Occupational Standards form the basis of the Scottish Vocational Qualifications or SVQs that uh, lots of our colleges offer. And the, and the good thing about our, the MPAs is that they link into this so you can actually see the clear pathway for progression from a, a learner completing an MPA and then potentially going on to another qualification. Whenever we think about MPAs, it's really important to think about what are the needs of the learners in your particular setting, because what works well, you know, up the road in Fraserburgh, it might not work well down the road in Locker Bay or work in Stirling or wherever you happen to be. So it's really important that you have an understanding of the learners that you've got sitting in front of you. So you should be looking at your quantitative data. You should be um, having a think about people views and then you should also be thinking about um, learner observations as well, thinking about what's actually happening in the classrooms and what is being based. And using that kind of triangulation of evidence, you'll be able to establish well, what's our next steps? Where do we go from here? Now, 
On this little slide as well, so you've got uh, the slides will be available um, afterwards. Um, I've put a little QR code on here just now. So uh, if you scan that, that'll take you um, through to the um, MPA homepage on the SQA website. I've also popped in the link um, for the SQA catalogue. Now, I've been through this, I don't know how many times, and dug through and trying to find different bits and pieces. So with the SQA catalogue, um, a couple of things to look out for, particularly if you're wanting to offer skills for work or national progression awards, anything like that. There may be some additional paperwork required. OK, so the bit that I've highlighted here is this bit about auto approval. OK, so with auto approval, that means you're automatically approved to deliver it. OK, so you're a presenting centre already. Now, if it says there is no auto approval, there is some additional paperwork required. And basically that takes you through, well, what's your rationale for wanting to deliver this? How are you going to deliver it? Who's delivering it? What's their qualifications? You know, what equipment do you have? And it basically it's just making sure that you as a centre um, are set up and ready to deliver this particular qualification. Now, should you have any more questions about that, um, you can speak to your school at SQA coordinator for more details. They, I'm sure they'll be more than happy to help you out with that. But just a few wee things just to flag up, you know, um, as we move forward, because it's like all these new qualifications are great, but we want to make sure that you're fully aware of potential barriers that might be there um, for um, applying these in your setting. So like I said, keep an eye out for the old auto approval um, whenever you go through, through this. Whenever you look at the SK catalog, whenever you run through it, um, it's quite tiny in this. Well, on my screen, it's now really super tiny. Um, so I highlighted scientific technology. So you've got um, your course code, um, the, the level that it's at, what kind of um, area it sits under, whether you need auto approval, all this type of thing as well. OK, so check the SQA website um, and there'll be more information there. And of course, have a chat with your school SQA coordinator too. So MPA is all about defined set of skills and you're wanting it. It's almost like you're trying to equip your learners to make sure that they can go in it to a particular vocational area. Some of the key ones to highlight to you, um, the, the ones that are quite common across schools in the country just now. So you've got applied sciences at level five. Now, this was previously called practical science. So they've changed that over just now. Um, and the course codes for that have changed as well. So once again, that's just something to highlight to do your SQA coordinator if needs be. Science and health. We've talked about it at um, a previous session. You've also got science and technology, both level four, and then the scientific technologies, level six, which we're going to be talking about a little bit later. On that, on the page that I got this from on the SK website, there is another qualification called laboratory science, and that's an SCQF level six. I think I, I, I need to advise you that this probably would be more better suited for college colleagues due to the volume of units required for completion. You need eight units to complete that and if one unit's about 40 hours uh, it would take a wee while to get through that so once again just be aware as well that some of the course codes are going to be changing for your science and health and science and technology and your N2 science in the environment and I would mentioned that before um, at a previous session but information is available on the SK website um, and I've contacted SK colleagues just to make sure I was giving you the correct information this evening as well. So each of these qualifications, National Progression Awards, so different units pulled from a couple of different places, um, as well as some practical units in there as well. And once again, what you offer in your school might be different to the one that's up the road because once again you know the young people that are sitting in front of you and you know your school and your department better than anybody else so it's really important that you just have this awareness and like I said this presentation will be available um, afterwards so you'll be able to use all these links yourselves and have a wee look in and if you want to discuss any of these further please don't hesitate to get in touch with me. So these are some of the sciencey ones. Now, there's another one that Angela's going to talk about, which I initially I thought, oh, that makes sense to put that in science. But I'll let her have it. I'll, I'll not steal her thunder and she can t tell you all about that a little bit later. 
Um, then foundation apprenticeships. OK, so the FA courses introduced a few years ago now, um, and it's about a partnership between the college and, of course, between the school. Now, the QR code on this one will take you to apprenticeships.scot. Um, and I used to use this actually quite a lot in class, particularly with my lab skills guys, um, because we would speak in class about, well, where could their qualification take them? What else could they do? And as well as having the link to the different foundation apprenticeships that are available, there's also the links to all the modern apprenticeships that are available across the country. So we're able to talk about, you know, um, so if so and so is on to uh, be a uh, do a modern apprenticeship in uh, electrical engineering or some sort of a plumber, all this type of thing. We're able to have a chat through there and also look at potential applications and how what they were doing in class would potentially benefit them moving on to what was there. So once again, QR code there takes you to the apprenticeships.scot website and it's in particular that's the link to the FA part of it. But the rest of that website is a fantastic resource for young people who are um, potentially looking, who are doing, you know, practical woodwork, who are doing uh, skills for work, engineering, lab skills, whatever. Really, really useful, especially for unit one of lab skills. The idea behind the foundation apprenticeships is to allow young people to gain an industry recognised qualification, because as well as given, getting a level six qualification out of this, so equivalent to the higher, they also get industry experience. And that by and far is the thing that sets them apart. And it's that industry experience where they can go into an interview and talk confidently about what they have done and the impact that it had. Um, and even to be able to put that on a CV, it can give them just that edge over the competition in um, an interview process. They also get the opportunity to learn the skills that employers want. And this is something that we've spoken about quite a lot over the last few weeks. And at our next session at the end of April, we're going to be hearing from employers within science industries and the healthcare industries about why these courses, the MPAs, the skills for work, um, your practical electronics, things like that, why these are so important to employers and what that means to them. And FAs was also very good at strengthening the CV or personal statement. And if they're wanting then to go into, say, a modern apprenticeship or a graduate apprenticeship, once again, because they've already been through um, and had some industry experience as well, that stands them in really good stead. And all FAs are recognised by our Scottish universities and by our colleges as well. So once again, you will be aware of these but maybe might not have had a chance to maybe go into it in as much depth as you might have liked to so this is an opportunity um, for you to do that. Now that's a very very brief insight and kind of signposting you um, to the different places where you can go. Now for the foundation apprenticeships there are um, 12 different ones um, and what is on offer will vary depending on where you are in the country. So this is what you have to make sure you emphasise to the young people. It depends what the college is offering at that point, but I'm sure my college colleagues will be able to share a wee bit more about that a little later. Once again, there's your QR code to, to take you to that. Um, in particular this evening, we're going to be thinking in and around the scientific technologies. But once again, you can see the options that are available for our learners um, and you might know of a young person who scientific technologies might not be for them but what about food and drink technologies you know still linked within the sciences engineering and so on so lots there for young people to think about and to consider okay so I'm going to stop talking for now um, and like I said folks please do put your thoughts reflections into the chat pane we're really looking forward to hearing from you because this is who we're doing the sessions for so I'm going to introduce our first speaker so I'm going to hand over to Angela Barkley um, from Money Faith in Angus. Angela over to you. Hi Jane thanks thanks for having me everybody um, I just want to give an overview of an MPA that we ran as part of the science curriculum at Monifi. So we got involved in the level five manicure and pedicure MPA. 
And this started up through a conversation that I'd had with someone on a, a training course and they were running a similar thing within their school. Um, so we looked into it and found out a bit more information. And as you can see from this pathway here, this is where it sits within the curriculum offer. So it's within sciences. It's alongside our other NAT4 and NAT5 courses, and it's just offering people an alternative if, if they're not as keen on a traditional science course, or in some cases they are taking up one of the science courses, normally with this MPA, it's biology that goes alongside it, um, and it gives them a practical course, a hands on thing that they can do as part of, of that. Next slide, please, Jane. So this gives you a wee overview um, of how we sort of share the information about the course. So uh, the, the pupils themselves kind of launched the nail bar, so they developed the name, they called it Top Coat. It's actually evolved into Top Coat Nail Gallery now. Um, as we get a new cohort of, of young people coming through, they kind of take ownership and develop it as they go along. You can see on here that we're taking people from S3 to S6 in the senior school, S5 and 6. They do it within one year um, and in S3, it's an ongoing course, S3 into S4. Um, so it's a varying um, amount of periods per week. In S3, I think they get two and in S4, they get three, but in S5 and 6, they get five each. So it adds up to five overall for the course, wherever they pick it. Um, and you can see a wee bit of the information about what they do within that course. And in the pictures, you can see all the equipment that we had to get as well. So it's not, um, you know, your typical course and it's not always straightforward to get started. But mm -hmm. it's not um, impossible to, to get past that and, and get everything done. So if we move on to the, the last one from me, Jane. Thank you. The, this one I'll probably dwell on a wee bit longer because what tends to happen is people hear about things and then they say, oh, but, you know, we won't be able to manage that because X, Y and Z, all the challenges. Um, so I kind of wanted to take you through the challenges that we faced. Uh, the first one was time to plan. When we first started looking into this, it was because we were really needing something different to offer. We didn't want young people feeling stuck with particular choices and we wanted to give them a variety and then everyone was keen for it to start up right away um, but I think with anything that, that's that's quite a big change like this you do need time to plan. Um, the way that we kind of started with that was we presented to staff about it um, we presented information to parents and young people and gave them the sort of background um, we broached it as like a, a sort of like an almost like an apprenticeship type course that was available um, and we were quite overwhelmed by the response to that. We had numerous staff willing to run the course and get involved. We, we already had someone in the school, as it turned out, who had the necessary qualifications to deliver this course, um, but we also had other people keen to go to classes, night classes and learn more about it themselves as well. So. Um, we were lucky too to have a partnership. Dundee and Angus College were keen to work with us um, and hopefully you would find that your local colleges would be the same. I know there's established partnerships in Ayrshire and a few other um, areas as well where the colleges support schools with this kind of thing. So they were willing to be like verifiers for us and to check our work and make sure that everything was going to be OK. And that sort of held our hand through it through the first time of delivery. People say, oh, we'll not have time to deliver this kind of course or we won't get time on the timetable. We certainly didn't face that challenge at all. Um, if anything, our timetabler was looking for more courses like this. So th there was no issue with it being added to that. Um, and there was no issue with staff time. The course doesn't take any longer than any other course to deliver. So providing you have the pupil uptake, the member of staff is is engaged uh, as they would be with any other course. Funding can be a challenge um, and I do accept when people say that one as an issue, you do need to buy the stuff, um, but the funding was available. Uh, Princess Trust do a lot of funding with grants for people. Um, so the grant is per pupil who takes part 
And at the time that we applied, I think it was £240 per pupil you can apply for. Um, and that would allow you to purchase their clothing. They get a, an apron and part of their uniform. They get an individual kit, which is their own manicure equipment. So they would get that purchased through that. Um, and we also got funding from some youth organisations through developing the young workforce routes because of the obviously direct link into the workplace. Um, and genuinely, apart from filling in the funding form, which takes a wee bit of time, the funding wasn't an issue at all. Um, so I would really encourage you not to not to worry about that. Obviously, tackle it, but don't worry about it. Um, another thing that people feel could be challenging is getting a business partnership. We wanted to make the course really realistic and we wanted to have links to industry. Um, and bear in mind as well, we started delivering this just at the beginning, just before the pandemic. So um, that was challenging, but we had interest from local businesses. People were interested because when they try to recruit young people, they have to train them themselves often uh, or help and support them through courses. And sometimes the young person doesn't know exactly what they're getting into and it's not a successful um, a successful situation. Whereas businesses who were supporting us knew then that young people who were going through this course could then go on to work with them and they would already have an awareness, they would already have a qualification um, and it just put, put everything into a much better situation. So we managed to maintain two business partnerships throughout COVID um, and that's been brilliant. They would come into school when they were allowed and work with the young people. We've had the option for people to go there for a little bit of work experience and that will only grow now that we're coming out of the other side of the pandemic. So moving on to the benefits, um, I think these just speak for themselves and it's I don't know if it's something that people think about but once you, once you realise it it's very obvious. If the young people are properly coursed then they will achieve. So instead of having people in the class who are not achieving because this course is not appropriate for them, you have these same young people channeled into a different course where they are achieving and they then become much more confident and much more independent. Staff who are working with them are much happier to spend time with them. It's very rewarding uh, to see how the young people pr progress. And the way that the nail gallery works um, in Monifith as well is that they run it like a little business. So although we got the initial funding coming in, the once the pupils pass their first assessment about manicure, they then go on and offer manicure to staff, to pupils for a small fee, which is basically then a donation back in to run the course. Um, so that sets a different relationship with staff as well because you and pupils because you see these pupils in a different light and you see them providing a service which you enjoy and which is necessary to you um, and it, it just changes the whole ethos around those young people and like I said already you have then a direct route into the workplace and into college via the partnership links so you're trying to secure a more positive destination for the young people involved. I think that's everything but I'll be around at the end for questions if if needs be. Thank you. That's great thank you so much Angela and what really struck me is this, as, as a biology teacher so whenever we were talking about this um, I loved the fact that of course there's there's bio there's science in this you know um, whenever it comes to preparing solutions and um, the health and safety aspect and, that, and that's even before you get to the physiology part of it with regards to the skin and things like that as well. So it, it makes it makes perfect sense and so many um, pupils that I've worked with before um, already go off and do this themselves and have their own wee side but so it makes sense and if that's something that a lot of your young people are interested in then you want to encourage that you want to support it because we want to be able to provide them with something that like you're saying it's right for them as well so thank you so much to Angela um just going to hand over now to David so David Dixon is joining us from Dunbar Grammar hopefully it's lovely and sunny over in Dunbar as well David yeah they call it they don't call it sunny dunny for nothing <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you so much. So just hand over to David, who's going to share with you his experience as well. Hi, everyone. Um, I've been a, could we just go back to the previous slide? Is that OK? Because I've got just a, by means of an introduction, 
I was, I've was i been coordinating the Science Foundation Apprenticeship Framework at East Lothian for about three or four years now, and we finally feel we've, we've made great headway with it, and it's up and running and very successful. But just to kind of set the scene, the reason why we kind of went for the, the FA framework in science is because traditionally across East Lothian is quite a small authority. It's only at least six secondary schools and uh, the, the science uptake across East Lothian has always been quite good. And what we wanted to do was open up science careers to those students who wouldn't normally have access to them. So non-university students, ideally. But what we've found and we find we're discovering new things every year and new ways of improving things and new, way of, new ways of targeting different sorts of pupils. We've now found we're, we kind of cover a wide range of aspirations, not just the, the students who want to maybe get a job straight from school in the science industries, but also it really helps students who want to go into university doing this <coughs> framework in scientific technologies. I've got to also say one of the driving reasons for getting involved in this was that the colleges for us are quite remote and it's quite difficult to encourage students to, to apply to colleges for um, for certain frameworks and we just refurbished a lab in one of our schools so we thought it'd be a good chance to maybe kick it off with at Dunbar Grammar School. Um, we've got a lot of companies and institutions on our doorstep and uh, Charles River is one of our main placement providers. We've also got Edinburgh University, the Botanic Gardens, Know, rural, rural colleges and so on. So we're, we're, we're well placed for um, supporting the students on their placements. And we're, we've become very, very popular. I think we had seven applicants in the first year and this year I've got 50 who were hoping to, to, to house entirely. Um, so that's, we've, we've come quite far. Um, and we're constantly improving. So one of the interesting things you were saying earlier, Jane, was this, uh, the idea of an MP6 award. And we've, four of our six secondary schools in East Lothian are actually dual qualifying students for higher chemistry and the MP6 award. So because the higher, the, there's quite a big overlap between higher chemistry and MP6 scientific technologies, you know, with a little bit of tweaking and a little bit of extra practical work and maybe some lab report write-ups, we're hoping to get uh, the majority of our students studying higher chemistry an additional MP6 pass this year. And the benefit of that is that obviously schools get uh, better attainment, students get extra qualifications, but I also get a, a bigger net of students who have done the first year of the Foundation Apprenticeship Award because that means I just need to find them a placement in S6. So there's a there's a lots of exciting things happening in East Lothian, and it but it didn't just happen overnight. It does take um, you know a lot of partners and a lot of people behind you to kind of make it work. And I'm very lucky to be in that situation. So um, just in terms of how it works, if you want to show that first slide, that'd be great. Thanks. So there's two different routes for studying the Foundation Apprenticeship. Um, I say it done by grammar school like within East Lothian. The first route is a two year course. Um, so pupils complete that in S5 and S6. And there's an entry requirement of having passed a, a National 5 Science and working towards National 5 Maths. And there's also an interview that the students have got to apply to uh, or, or go through to make sure that they're, they're suitable candidates. Most of the time they are, and it's really just a kind of, you know, a getting to know you kind of exercise. So the, the purpose of that is to make sure you actually have the, have the right kind of cohort attending this, this course, because uh, expectations are quite high. These students are going to be going on placement and representing your school and also, you know, th they have to have a certain maturity level and to a degree an academic level as well. Because if you don't have placements, then your, your course won't run. And if, if you don't keep your placement providers happy that you're, you, you're giving them enthusiastic and keen students, not necessarily, you know, whiz kids, but just, you know, the right type of student who wants to learn, then they're going to get cold feet about it. So that, that's quite an important balancing act to make sure you've got the right student on the course. And we, we, we spend an awful lot of time to make sure we have that. So in S5, they come to Dunbar Grammar School. It's called a hub school. And all the other students from other schools come to Dunbar as well on a Tuesday and Thursday afternoon, half past one till five. And the council pays for taxis to get them there and back. Um, and I take them through the MP6 award. And for I would say about 10 weeks throughout that year, and that's 10 weeks of Tuesdays and Thursdays, they get a, a industry experience, you could say, at Napier or one of our local universities or, or SRUC, one of our placement providers. But that's a, a, a short snap. Uh, a, 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 a short, short snippet of what it's like working in a real life lab. So my my job really is to focus on the, I see it is focusing on the um, experimental techniques of the MP6, because most students come to you from a, a background of working in groups of three, 
three or four students in S S four chemistry or biology, and it's not a great start for working as a you know it's a big jump between that and going into research lab and actually working with scientists and supporting them. So I, I give them lots of advanced higher practicals and investigations, and I get them to work individually so they're they're really getting more skilled and more um, confident. Their abilities are increasing and their time management's improving. So at the end of S5, they're far better scientists, uh, practical scientists. I would say there's there is good or better than any advanced higher chemist student you'll have in the authority. But they'll also have that 10 weeks of experience in in a in a lab where they've kind of seen how a, a non-school lab works from a health and safety perspective and they've got to use maybe apparatus they've never had a chance to use before. So the, the, when it comes to the second year of the course, which is entirely in placement, uh, they really are, they're going to hit the ground running, they're confident, they're able and they're keen and enthusiastic and they're, 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 they're competent. And in S6, basically the, the same pattern continues, they, they get allocated a proper placement at that point. So there's I've indicated there some of our placement providers that were uh, our partners we work with. Challenge River being our, our main one, they're based just outside Trinidad. And for the entire six year, they, they go on a Tuesday and Thursday afternoon and work their way through three SVQ units. And, you know, uh, compile a portfolio of work that's assessed and they get observed and I kind of oversee the process to make sure they're on track and they come out with the foundation apprenticeship. Now, that's the two year route, but you know, a lot of students were weren't applying in S5 because um, a lot of students want to bag, especially the ones that want to go in and study science, they want to bag five highs in S5. My daughter was like that. Um, she goes to a local high school. And so we managed to get these students in S6 because if you've, if you've studied higher chemistry, you've actually completed a great deal of the course already. So we call this route the direct entry route in S6. And it allows students who've got a, the right background, which is you know fairly competent in maths and certainly in chemistry, to kind of go through all the assessments for the MP6 they've missed from the first year. And we do that in June, and they hopefully we'll get them a little placement in June as well. And after they come back after the summer holidays, they basically just go on placement. So they, it's, it's it's direct entries because they've done higher chemistry and most of them have done higher maths. They've done such a lot of the MP6 already. I just need to fill in the gaps, and I do that normally before the course starts, like I say, in June, but sometimes throughout the year. And that's really improved our uptake as well. And um, it's given a, the route to, this route to, it, it definitely attracts the students who want to go to university straight from school. There's no question about that, because as you mentioned, it's, and we'll, I'll talk about that in the next slide, the, the benefits to the students of doing this are just, you know, hard to ignore. So that's a little bit about the two routes we offer, uh, the two-year foundation apprenticeship uh, in S5 and S6 and the direct entry route in S6. Um, if you want to put the next slide, please. There's some uh, photographs of our previous students from a couple of years ago. I don't know if they've come across that well, but they're all they're all happy in those photographs. Apart from poor Beth, who didn't want to get her photograph taken and she just uh, refused to turn around. <laughs> what a shame, but um, quite shy. It's it's impossible to talk about benefits to students without talking about benefits to the employers because if there wasn't any, I mean, if I'm being honest with you, if there wasn't any benefits to employers in hosting a student and training them for a whole year on a couple of afternoons, they wouldn't get involved at all. So what's in it for them is really important and they get the chance to, to train and potentially new recruits for their entry level posts should they arise in the next year or so. And that, that happens quite a lot. Charles River in particular, a local, um, they're a very large organisation and they'll take any number of good students we produce every year. Last year they took four. Um, they're able to custom train employees to match the needs of the departments. And that's really important. It's almost like a year long interview because, you know, a, a lot of these places, if they're not offering modern apprenticeships, they're, they're on the brink of doing that. And so they see this as an opportunity to kind of, well, let's have this student in for a year and see what they're like. Um, in the event they have a student, and quite often is the case, because most students do go into university after this to study science, if they have a, if they're hosting two students and both of both of those students want to go to university, well, there'll be another provider that they'll be able to get in touch with. That you know, we we'll have seminars every every quarter, so there'll be other providers that actually have students who are looking for jobs. So there's a there's a very close knit network of science providers and myself, and we communicate communicate quite regularly about that. Um, there, although there may be no immediate benefit to an employer, 
in hosting a student who's not wanting to work straight from school. They're quite canny and wise and they know that in four or five years time these students will be wanting jobs after university. So they definitely need to keep in touch with students after their placement because there's opportunities for summer work here um, in any of these institutions and also opportunities um, after they finish their university study. But of course I'm more interested in the benefits to students because, um, and this is the students are beginning to be more and more aware of this. It's a, it really is a fantastic opportunity. If you've got an interest in, in um, a science career when you leave school, whether that's going to university or getting a job straight from school, you'd be crazy to miss up in this experience, miss out in this experience, um, because we have students who have that are earning about twenty thousand pounds a year, and I don't even think they're twenty yet. You know, a lot of our employers pay the minimum living wage. They'll give them day release, and so and, and they've got you know secure job prospects. That that's not something that's um, necessarily maybe the case if you go to university. And um, so they really are becoming more interested in that. But out of the fourteen students who had last year complete the course, I would say ten, four of them got jobs straight from school in the science industries, and uh, ten went on to university. But those ten, you know, they got a. Um, a reference from their, their, their placement supervisor, the scientists that trained them. They were able to write in their UCAS application form how many hundreds of hours they had in a research lab working alongside scientists. So really it's a it's a win-win situation for any, when I said earlier we kind of cater to all aspirations, that, that, that is true and, and this year I've got the same kind of broad spectrum of of student and I've got students who are not traditional academic who want to get who definitely want to get a job straight from school and they will get it um, if, if, if they do their placement well and to, to, to students who want to go and study veterinary medicine and so I'm able to place them in the, one of our placements is, is at the Dick Vet you know um, school so I can I can place them there and that, that will certainly help them get into university um, and, and, and follow their dreams so really I'm extremely enthusiastic about this because it's, for me it's a, it's a, it's a no-lose situation, it's a win for everybody um, and the, one of the most remarkable things to see is students who apply to your course, because right now I'm interviewing for, for places and like I say we've got over 50 applicants this year and it's great to hear them hear their dreams and what they want to move on to and but you know for a fact that when they get into placement those those aspirations will change because they'll be they'll be working alongside scientists who will open doors for them and uh, create new pathways for them and this is to actually be a part of that and to see that happening is remarkable you know we have students who they, they go to Edinburgh University um, in the engineering chemical engineering department who want to go and study physics so when, when they're there, they'll get taken to the physics uh, faculty and shown around there, well, you'll be here next year and all that sort of stuff. And it's just the opportunities that are available to students and, and, and people, the scientists love speaking to them and sharing their knowledge and expertise and advice. It, it really is a fantastic course. And if you get the chance to set it, I mean, I'd be, I'm always happy to speak to people who are who are wanting to go down this road and setting up maybe in the, in a similar model to what we have in East Lothian. I'd be more than happy to to, to discuss the ups and downs, but it really is a, a, it's a, a privilege to be involved in it and it's, it, it makes a huge difference to our young people. I could talk about this for hours and I know I'm not supposed to, so I better stop now. Perfect timing, David, perfect timing. And once again, the, you know, your enthusiasm for the course is very infectious and we've had multiple discussions about this as well and we're very much on the same page. I uh, just think it's wonderful how you've got a course like this, which it's, it's it creates a level playing field in a way doesn't it it's it's about making sure it's accessible you know young people um who enter into this course they're all given the same opportunities they can all access these wonderful placements you know mm -hmm. and make the connections themselves and build their own it's about i suppose they're building their own network you know um yeah. of support uh that can help drive forward their um own aspirations and once again that kind of aspirational kind of learning as well where they're out speaking to scientists and their pathway might change and once again you know as mm -hmm. we were told there's no wrong path and um, so it's so important to keep that message there as well so thank you so much and like all. I said um, we there will be time for questions at the end as well so and Dave will be here so if you have any questions please do put them 
in the chat pane or you're welcome at the end uh, to turn on your mic and um, ask questions as well. Um, and our final speakers this afternoon then, so we're going to head up to Dundee and Angus um, and going to hand over to Julia Wright and to Pamela Duke from Dundee and Angus College who are going to share uh, a little bit about their experience as well. Thank you. Hi, so um, I'll go first and then it'll be Jules that will be telling you a little bit about um, what we do with Aberdeenshire. So it's quite interesting to hear everybody else speaking because it's coming from the, the school perspective and obviously we're on the other side of it, if you like. Um, and we are obviously within the college itself and we're delivering um, FAs in the Dundee and Angus area. So we don't have um, the sort of I suppose, nice position to be in that, that David was talking about. We we do have lower numbers in the Dundee and Angus region for, for some reason. I'm not quite sure why. And, and Jules will be speaking about, obviously, the work that we do with Aberdeenshire, who, again, are in the same position of having good numbers. Um, in terms of the college, what we, we do anyway, we sort of have courses from sort of level four or five all the way through to HNC, HND. Um, and alongside our courses, we do um, or have done for quite a few years is we deliver modern apprentices. So it's very similar, obviously, in terms of the model that we have for modern apprentices. The foundation apprenticeships kind of follow the same model in that they have um, an academic side where they have to, you know, learn the units and pass assessments. And then they've got the work placements where they, they have the SVQs or in the past couple of years, the customised units that um, they need to, to deliver and get gain evidence for. So we were quite fortunate in that because we do deliver the modern apprentices, we we had development officers here within the college. So people that had the, the relevant qualifications of their LND9 and LND11s for the IV. So it was just a case of putting out to the schools and seeing how many we get back. Now, as I said, for some reason, science within this, this region, um, it wasn't a great uptake. Um, and so we were obviously keen to try and get this um sort of delivered or actually being able to offer this um, to the to the pupils. So we had to kind of try and think of other ways that we could actually deliver it. Now, we deliver MPs anyway as part of our, our normal portfolio of courses. So what we decided to do, and I'm not sure if it's actually on the next screen, um, the next slide, we decided to embed the NPA into one of our um, certificate courses. Our certificate in applied science is a level five, six course. Um, so pupils come in or students come in with um, some national five qualifications, um, C or above, and they just need to have at least one science qualification and um, a nat five maths if they don't have the chemistry. So this is our, our full time course. Um, and what we did was we actually then took the NP in scientific technologies and we offered the NP in scientific technologies as our senior phase, but also obviously as part of the FA. So it meant that we could have school pupils coming in and either just doing the MPA or they could do it as part of their, their FAA framework. And again, as David was saying, we offer it as the FAA as a one year or a two year model. So by embedding this NPA within our full time course, it meant that obviously our students were able to um, also gain this qualification as part of their course. Um, and that meant that because we had sort of slightly lower numbers, we were still able to run the course and still offer it to the students because it was going to be running anyway. Um, and that way that we were able to hope for, we were hoping it would sort of build up a momentum within the schools um, in the local area. And then that would then lead on to um, sort of higher numbers that we can maybe do standalone qualifications. So our NP has been quite su successful. Actually, it's kind of is relevant to the students that we have and what they do. They do um, higher units as well. So our certificate courses is based up of SQA units and some locally devised units as well, college based units. And this fits in nicely to what they're doing within that course anyway. So it allowed us to just get the, the ball rolling with um, the FA because um, I think, can't remember off the top of my head numbers, but we're, we're looking at below 10, you know, each year. Um, so it's not a huge number. So we're trying to sort of get more engagement with the schools and trying to, especially the, the parents as well. I think that the parents may be um, seeing this as a, a, a an alternative to actually maybe doing a hire or for students that maybe think that science is something that they, they can't get into, this is just an alternative pathway. So we are trying to work, you know, it isn't just the, you know, the usual Nat 5 hires and off you go to university. There's so many different pathways that they can do nowadays and this is just one of them. And as David was saying as well, the experience that they get from the, the FA is a great experience that they wouldn't normally be able to get in their normal um, traditional qualifications. 
So if you just move on to the next slide. So like I said, the, the MPA just runs within uh, one of our full time courses. Um, and currently we're doing the customised units, um, but although we're doing customised units, they are out on placement. So we've been able to, luckily, I know other regions have had real problems trying to get um, work, pla work placements in the past couple of years. Um, and we've been really lucky that we have had partners that we work with already um, and we're able to offer it. So the work-based units, we do start building this evidence in their first year. So they do as part of it, obviously, the experimental procedures and their chemistry units. All of that can feed into evidence for their work based units. So we make sure that they keep all the evidence. We do all, you know, your lab safety, they do risk assessments. So they're, they're starting to build that evidence right from day one, if you like, um, when they come to college and start their MPA. And then when they move on to the work based units, they can then just focus on more specific um, techniques. Um, that whatever the partner is, that whatever they're working is, the lab that they're working in, whatever they do. So we've got ATL turbines, NHS Tayside and Aberdeen University this year that we're using um, for work placements who have all been great. And like David was saying, I think, you know, the, the work placements, the industries are actually really, really keen to get involved in this. I think whether they, you know, they do see this as, as potential future um, employees, also partly I think they're just enthusiastic about what they do and they really really like like to sort of share that with people and get pupils young people enthused about sort of science as well so we found that they've all been very very helpful and very eager to take people on um, and do that repeatedly as well year after year I should say as well to find the work placements we did work with DYW in order to find some of these placements they were great at going out knocking on doors and actually asking a lot of the industries um if they would be happy to take placements. So I think that's a great resource to have as well if you're finding um, the work-based part of it slightly difficult. They do some work with, because we are in a college as well, we do have our technicians here. So we do have um, some of the sort of introductory, um, I was going to say work, but it's really just, we, we do a lot of the health and safety prior to going out and work placements. We do that within college. Um, just so they're a bit more prepared for going out into industry. Obviously, each of the, the employers will have their own specific health and safety um, course or training that they'll put them through. But we do like to get them sort of slightly prepared for going out into industry before. So we do that um, in their pre-summer um, time that they come to the college when they're just after the timetable change, we get them into college and do some initial health and safety. And then they'll go out to on work placement once or twice a week. And, you know, depending on their timetable, some of our our students have gone out and maybe done full days. Some are just doing what they can, you know, the, the two hours um, twice a week that they can go out or three hours twice a week that they can go out. Um, so this, I would say the employer has been really, really flexible and it's given them great experience. They're in there in the labs where the scientists working alongside them, doing techniques that they would never have been able to do, you know, in school and um, getting that employer sort of engagement or experience that they could find and again for even if they're going off to university and they're not wanting to do a college course they're going to go into um, in employment I think just the experience for writing that on their UCAS application is is fantastic so I think it fits all types of pupils um, it gives them a great experience no matter what it is that they want to go on and do in the future so that's how we've done it with our slightly lower, lower numbers in Dundee and Angus um, but I'll pass on to Jules because we also do work with um, Aberdeenshire Council um, so we've been doing that for the past few years as well. So I'll hand over to her and she'll tell you a bit more about that. OK, so I think I've probably got about four minutes, Jane, have I? You're grand. It's fine. <laughs> you can take five. Perfect. So we've worked with Aberdeenshire Council for about the past three years now. Um, and they were looking for somebody to deliver the SVQ part of it. So they were happy to do the MPA section in the schools um, and most of these are now on the one-year model so they're all doing it just across that one-year model so they're able to do the MPA in schools and then we pick up um, the SVQ units and we assess those. Like Pam had said the last couple of years we've kind of worked on those customised units but I'm hopeful that maybe next year we'll go back to the SVQ units because I think they give a better kind of all-round work-based experience. The numbers from them have been really, really good. We initially started with six um, just from one school and that worked really nicely because that was just pre-COVID and it meant they were all able, able to get out um, onto placements, which was really nice. And I was able to go up and observe them in the workplace um, 
and the partnership providers were again really keen to have them and they really really wanted to be able to give um, a good experience to to the school pupils so we had a lot of discussions about what they should be doing in the workplace what they needed to learn because they were really keen to give them the best experience they actually could um, in the time that they were with them. So they were doing the NPA at school and there were two afternoons a week then out on placement there. And, and there was a variety of industries up in Aberdeenshire area that were that were able to offer placement for them. So like I say, first year was six and then the following year we've kind of increased that to sort of 30 odd, dropped a little bit this year, but numbers are, are looking good um, for next year. And what that's really meant, there's been really good working relationship between the schools in Aberdeenshire area as well and the, the local industry. There's been limited placements these last couple of years, but what Aberdeenshire Council have done is put a lot of work in to just getting industry involvement. So setting up um, practicals that would be done in an industry workplace that could be replicated in schools. So Aberdeen University did that for them. Um, and also working with a couple of other industries where they've recorded videos, they've shown them around the lab, they've invited sort of meet and greet with the students so that the um, with the pupils so they can have sort of teams chats with them, sort of Q and A sessions with them. So they've really tried to work hard on getting industry input as much as possible, even though there hasn't been the opportunity for placements. Um, and one of the main sort of reasons that we got the contract for this is that the schools weren't able to provide qualified assessors and IVs um, for the SVQ units. Um, so the schools weren't able to provide teachers that had the suitable industry experience for it. So they were able to come to us. Uh, we've got a set of a qualified assessors and IVs that are able to then go out, do the workplace observations. So... Instead of it being on placement this year, they've managed to go to the schools, but they've managed to see the pupils in that lab environment and do workplace assessments, sort of observing their um, skills and abilities within the classroom and things like that. So that's worked really well. Um, so we have assessors, we have IVs that have been able to do the SVQ units for them. So it's been a really successful partnership, and I think it's developed really well kind of year on year you know from that first initial nobody really quite knew what they were doing um to it becoming a really nice partnership with lots and lots of input from industry up there i'm really hopeful that next year they will be able to find placements for the numbers um that they're hoping they're going to recruit and that we can keep on kind of developing the partnerships with the industry and things like that that have worked so well over these past few years so i'll, I'll stop there because you've got five minutes left Perfect time and thank you so much Sheila and Pam as well for sharing what you guys have been getting up to in Dundee and Angus and the thing that's really coming across for me is this partnership you know it's that real um, spirit of collaboration between the schools and the college but also between the college and the industry and the schools and the industry and things like that and it doesn't happen overnight either I think this is one of these things where um if you're if you're looking to uh, embed uh, the MPA into uh, your course, it's about building up those relationships and maintaining the positive relationships. So it's it's not a quick fix. I wish I could say, yep, yeah, you could start this tomorrow. Um, but with this, it's it's about building and sustaining that relationship. So you really then have that impact within your local community as well, and it, it makes um it makes such a big difference for the young people that are there as well. So, folks, I realise we have given you lots of information uh, this evening. Like I said, please do. Uh, if you have any questions, you can start popping them in the chat. Um, on want to give you some time for reflection as well. So have a think. What was it? Was, was there anything in particular from this evening that you thought, you know what, that really resonated with me and I want to know more about that? If you haven't already done so, we would really encourage you to join the Secondary Sciences Network or pester your colleagues and get them to join it as well. Um, if you'd like to continue a conversation about this, once again, you can contact us at stem at educationscotland.gov.scot. Um, there's a few resources that um, we have available as well if you're wanting to do some self-evaluation in and around your curriculum offer. Um, so there is a, a curriculum design evaluation rubric and um, there's also the STEM self-evaluation and improvement framework as well. So these are all available to you. Our next session will be um, the 25th of April. Um, 
it seems so long away, but I didn't realise, you know, until like Friday, it's it's the end of March already. Uh, how did that happen? Um, but with this particular one, we're once again, it's like coming out the other end. We've been looking at all the different qualifications and the how you how you do this and the partnerships and so on. But now we're trying to make those connections with industry. And it's about hearing from employers about the relevance of these qualifications that we're putting into it. So what is the benefit for employers whenever it comes to these qualifications? You know, and I suppose it's about, once again, it's about making those connections, getting that network going as well. And we're really fortunate that we're going to be joined by Sarah Smith, um, who is the, any, uh, Ian, you'll have to keep me right here, um, health care science um, connect to um, the Scottish Government, uh, really instrumental in um, the development of the lab skills course prior to that coming out. Ian, keep me right, because I think I've given her an even bigger title, potentially. <laughs> it's not a title, Jane. Yep, I think she'll it's right to about there. It's right <laughs> about there. It's fine. Um, so, yeah, so that is at the end of April, which will be around long before you know it. Um, so, Finally, from me, um, we do have an evaluation again, because once again, we these sessions are very much for you and led by what you want us to do. Um, so we really would appreciate if everyone would complete the evaluation. It only takes you um, like two minutes or three minutes, I think was the last one that took folk was the average time for that one. And all the feedback that we get from you goes back into the system again so we can make sure that we provide an offer um, that supports staff and the needs of staff in schools at this point in time. So thank you to Angela and to David and to Pam and to Julia. Really want to uh, really do appreciate your input in this afternoon's session and just given those kind of perspectives you know the different perspectives different schools the college perspective as well which sometimes we can we can miss in schools a wee bit I feel like as a class teacher as well sometimes I don't quite know what they do but having that additional insight it kind of breaks down the barriers a wee bit more so if anyone has any questions you're more than welcome to pop um your microphone on or if you want to put something in the chat um you're more than welcome to do that as well and if not no worries and um, we do appreciate it. it is quarter past five on a lovely sunny uh monday evening in scotland um so Please do. You're more than welcome to stay and have a chat or if you want to head off and enjoy the rest of your evening. So thank you very much, everyone, again.